Senator Mike Gravel, two-term United States Senator from Alaska and former Speaker of the Alaskan House. Senator Mike Gravel is running for President on the Democratic ticket in 2008. Senator Gravel, you've been out of politics for some time now. Uh, do you care to tell us a little bit, first of all, about your background and why you've decided now is the time to re-enter politics? For two, two reasons. One is, of course, the uh, Iraq War. I just think this is horrible. This is, uh, this is uh, Vietnam uh, revisited. And, of course, I've got some experience in, in fighting our presence in wars. And so I want to use that experience right now and have been trying to fight the war in Iraq. Keep in mind, the people that I'm running against, they've got experience in going to war. I want to get us out and end this. The other reason is, is that we know, Americans know there's something basically wrong with what's going on in our government. And there's only two venues for possible change, the government, where the problem is, or the people. And so I've designed a package called uh, the National Initiative, which is a federal ballot initiative where people can be empowered to make laws once it's enacted by the people. Now keep in mind, people, tw people in 24 states make laws. In over 200 communities they make laws. Why can't they make laws at the federal level? And that's what I think is the answer to our whole problems as a nation. Is there anything that the idea of ballot initiatives at a state level has that would be different from how it works at a federal level? And could you explain exactly how a person creates a ballot initiative? Uh, the difference is that in the 24 states and the local communities that have it, they don't have deliberative procedures. And that was a mistake that was made 100 years ago. But even with the lack of deliberative procedures, we've had over a thousand pieces of legislation enacted by the people into law, and they've done just as good a job as their elected officials. But when it comes to fiscal matters, the people do a far better job. They know it's their money, and they're a lot more conservative than their leaders, regardless of what party is in power. Now, how it would work specifically, you want to distinguish between, people get confused, they talk about referenda or referendum. A referendum is, and any legislative body in the world can refer something to the electorate, but the body decides what that legislation will be. What I'm talking about is real lawmaking by the people, and that's where you and I can sit here, or a group of us can decide, well, we think this should be a law. We think we should get out of Iraq right now. Well, we could put this forward if we had this legislative power in place, and within a week's time, the people could make a decision to get out, rather than watching the Congress diddle around with this for the next two years, and then maybe even after that. Remember, Richard Nixon kept us in a war for another four years after he promised that he had a secret plan to end it. And so that's the power that I think Americans should have. And the, and the procedures, you can go to this website, nationalinitiative.us and you'll see the law it's less than 5,600 words or you can go to my website which is gravel08.us and the text of the law is there it will take you to the other site and you can vote you can vote for the national initiative and if you change your mind two weeks later you can come back and see how you voted and change it that that's the process now when we get 60 million Americans that have signed on to that, and that's the standard we've set. This is not an easy undertaking, but it is a very serious undertaking because we have to have Americans belly up to the bar and say, we're going to take responsibility for our governance. Now, we're not doing away with representative government. We're bringing the people in to act as partners with their elected officials. We're adding a new check to our system of checks and balances, which whenever one party controls like the last six years, are voided. These wonderful checks that our founding fathers thought they were putting in place, they're voided every time one party, Democrat or Republican, controls all three areas of government. But when the people come in as a check, you will not be able to void them because the people will act in a majoritarian fashion. And one of the problems that pe I get is, oh, I, you know, I think it's a good idea, but I don't trust that guy down the street. I think he's an idiot. He shouldn't be allowed to vote. Well, keep in mind, I'm not talking about individuals. I'm talking about a constituency of the whole. That means the entire people are making a decision on a majoritarian basis. Our national constituency is about 130 
a million people who are registered to vote. And so would you trust a decision made by the majority of 130 million people or the majority of 535 individuals plus nine people in black robes? Where do you think you're going to get the best decision? You're going to get it from the people. Trust me on that one. So at that level, when we talk about ballot initiatives at the state level and talk about the majority having the ability to make these types of laws, whether you're on the left or on the right, there's always going to be something to be afraid of. In some states, you would have the majority, if this is just at a state level, not a federal level, the majority would say creationism in the schools. In other states, they would say marijuana is legal. Left or right, you always have something to be afraid of. So what happens at the federal level? You get the same problem as at the local level, and that is what this has to have behind it is unreserved faith in the people. And I have more faith in the American people than I have in the leadership of this country. And I've been there, seen it, I know how it operates, and it does not operate in the public interest first and foremost. The fear is unfounded. We're not going to turn back the clock. What I find is most people will have criticisms that based upon their experience with representative government. Let's take, who brought you slavery? Representative government. Who brought you irresponsible government? Fiscally, representative government. You can just go, go down the line and look at all of the bad things that have happened. It's representative government. And you know something? In the states that have the initiative laws, studies have shown that they have better government than the states that don't. And I can cite the case of California. California is the most progressive state in the United States. And most people don't realize that people in California, they're, 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 what they spend on energy is half of what we spend. They are more, they're economical to the point of being equal to Denmark. Most Americans don't do that. And I get bad rap. Oh, look at how bad California is. You know, the people out there are doing, you know, I got to tell you, California is a great state and we should follow their example. But most of these initiatives take place in the West. In the East, there's only Massachusetts and Maine that have the, the process. And, uh, and, and here again, we, there's no reason why we can't have it at the federal level. No reason at all. 